Well, there's a real split on this. You're seeing the Southern European countries so eager to get tourism back in time for the summer. They're really pushing for this. They are supported by several other countries, <clears throat> most notably Austria. Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel seemed to be coming around to the idea at her press conference last night. But other countries, most notably France, have a lot of concerns about this for a variety of reasons. One is that it might give people a false sense of security. We don't yet know whether the vaccines actually actually prevent the transmission of the virus. So it could be that the vaccine might protect you, but you could still carry the virus and give it to someone else. So if you are allowed on a plane and go to a country and everybody's mixing and they think it's fine because number of people are vaccinated, that could cause a big problem, especially with new variants. The other problem is about personal liberties. If you start requiring the certificate, especially for normal things like going to a movie theater uh, or, or a concert, then you're effectively requiring everyone to get the vaccine and you could get a big pushback from the public. The counter argument is that these certificates are going to happen no matter what. And if the EU doesn't get ahead on this and create an EU-wide standardized certificate, you could get a situation where you have 27 different national certificates in the EU and countries aren't recognizing each other's certificates. At the end of the day, it's going to be a national decision for each country whether and how they want to require these certificates. And so leaders were saying to Macron yesterday, look, if you in France don't want to use these certificates, that's your business. But your citizens are going to want to make sure that if they get a vaccination in France, they will receive a certificate that will be recognized across the block and so that they can go to Greece and take a vacation. And if the EU doesn't start working on the standardization now, other people may get ahead. Google and Apple, we know, are already working on a digital version of this. Uh, and so I think there is consensus at this point that the EU should at least create the standards for this. Now, there could be a battle in the future about whether it could be used for travel, because, of course, you could get into a legally tricky situation there if Greece is requiring a certificate from people coming from France, for instance, that could be seen as inhibiting free movement within the EU. That being said, we've seen all kinds of measures restricting travel within the EU in this emergency situation during the pandemic, and the Commission has not pursued infringement action for that. So I don't think that the Commission would be pursuing infringement action for those requirements, at least not this year, probably not next year either. And of course, countries could get around this requirement simply by saying this is a requirement for being on an airplane rather than a requirement for being on the country. So I do think we have consensus now that the EU is going to develop its own digital certificates, but whether and how that will be used is a battle for another day. And Dave, also high on the agenda at this European summit, the question of how to get AstraZeneca, uh, sorry, AstraZeneca uh, to keep to its contractual commitments regarding its delivery schedule for vaccine. What progress, if any, was made on that front? Yes, yeah, several national leaders asked the EU to get tougher with AstraZeneca to make it meet its commitments. They're particularly rattled by the news earlier this week that not only will AstraZeneca not meet even half of what it promised for the first quarter, it's also going to fall short on its promised deliveries for the second quarter. And it appears they were not reassured by an appearance by the company's CEO at the European Parliament yesterday in a hearing in which he did not give a firm commitment that AstraZeneca would meet its second quarter commitments. Uh, Apparently, Mario Draghi, the new Italian prime minister who was participating in his first EU uh, summit, was the most aggressive on this, saying that the commission should use this new ability to ban or block specific exports from pharma companies that haven't met their EU commitments. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about this. There was real frustration, I'm told, among the leaders that the United States has a vaccine export ban. The UK has a de facto export ban because of its Britain first arrangement with AstraZeneca. And meanwhile, the EU is exporting one third of the vaccines made here. They want to get a better control over that. We'll see if the commission responds by actually using that export ban mechanism. Dave Keating in Brussels, thank you very much.